Let's consider the system property called stability and also how to determine whether or not a system is stable. To begin with, let's consider a system T. T has an input x of n, and this would be a sequence of values, and it produces an output sequence y of n. Now in terms of notation, we say that the system operates on the input sequence x of n to produce the output sequence y of n. Now we're investigating here the notion of whether or not the system is stable. And to develop that idea, let's begin by considering the input. And I'll form the absolute value of the input sequence. The reason for that it forces any negative values to positive values. Then I want to identify the maximum absolute value of this input sequence. I'll give that the name b sub x, and this is the bound on the input. Or you'd say it's the upper bound on the input sequence. And by definition, we want to say that this upper bound is finite. So we form a bounded input to the system. Now in a similar way that we did this on the input side, we can do so on the output side. We can consider the bound on the output side. And write that as by equals the maximum absolute value of the output sequence. Now the notion of stability is, if, if we have a bounded input, then that produces a bounded output. If that's true, we say that the system is BIBO stable. This is also a biconditional statement. If the system is known to be stable, then we know that the, these pair of statements are likewise true. Let's try to apply this notion to a couple examples. In the first example, we have a system that's formed as the current input times the previous input. And to picture this, let's have the absolute value of x of n looking like this picture. And let's imagine that this stem sticking up here is the bound bx. This is our maximum input value of the sequence, and it's finite. Let's also say that this occurs at the specific time x, or at the specific time n naught. Now the system is always operating on the current input times the previous input. Now the previous input could potentially be as high as the bound bx, but it will never be higher because by definition bx is the bound. What does that mean after this particular signal passes through the system? Well, the bound on by is formed as the maximum am absolute value of the output sequence. bx, as it passes through the system, will give us this value, and then we need to multiply by the previous input sample. If we say that the previous input sample is, in fact, bx, then the bound on the output by is bx times bx, or bx squared. If we wanted to make this a little more general, we could say that by is less than or equal to bx squared. That allows the previous value to be less than bx. But in any event, if bx is finite, certainly bx squared is also finite. Therefore, we conclude that our bound by is finite. These two statements then become true. Therefore, we conclude that our system is bounded input, bounded output stable. Let's give this a try on a second example. In this case, the system operates on the input by summing all the values from minus infinity up to the current time n. Let's put down our proof structure here and then turn to the specifics. 
Since we're dealing with an infinite sum, it may be more convenient to use the proof by counterexample technique. Let's give that a try. What I'm going to do is assume a specific input for x, which is all ones. This is ones for all time. Clearly, this is a bounded input, bx equals one. We'll find that for this particular input, as we consider what's happening with the output calculation, we are always summing from minus infinity up to the present value n. If x has always been equal to one, then we see that really for any value of n all the way up to positive infinity, by is also equal to infinity. We're summing an infinite number of bounded values. Therefore, the output is unbounded, and this system is not BIBO stable. All right, hopefully you have a little better idea of system stability and how to determine whether or not the system is stable.